Hi there, I'm Eric Ward Weaver Sherbin, go to the Red Gar Folk here in East Texas, and I would like to welcome you to The Raven's Call. This is a show where I ramble on about different heathen-related subjects, just kind of whatever strikes my fancy sets my mind on fire at the time. Big UPG warning at the beginning of this episode, like always. Uh, these are just the viewpoints of one Gothi, one, one heathen, here in East Texas, doing things his way. Um, if asked what kind of a heathen am I, I'm a Ridgari heathen, which is, you know, Ridgar, my tribe. Uh, <laughs> I do heathenry the way my tribe does heathenry, and that is, that's how that needs to be, and that's how it's going to be. Uh, so, yes, that, that the whole point of that is, take anything I say with a grain of salt. It's meant to be a conversation starter, not the end-all, be-all authority on anything at all. So, uh, yeah, this is episode 200. So, guys, please remember that there's a link for my book down in the bio stuff below. Uh, please do hit the link, follow, uh, if you would, please, as far as the channel, you know, subscribe, ding for the bell for notifications, all that stuff. It helps the channel grow. Um, buy my book. Yeah. Uh, other than that, all of my contact information is down below. Got some great recommendations that are going to be show ideas coming uh, in the near future. Uh, but due to time constraints and, and the fact that this is the 200th episode, I wanted to kind of pull back a little bit and do something that was off script. Uh, just a fun thing uh, because it is episode 200 and I didn't want it to just be another normal kind of talking head video. I thought I'd do something a little out of my comfort zone. Uh, not really though because it used to be a thing. Uh, by now you've seen the header so you know that today's episode is going to be uh, drums and heathenry and I'm going to give a little bit of background to it and kind of a, a disclaimer this is not going to be what you expect. This is not your everyday um, heathen drumming video okay and I will explain why here in just a moment. So uh, like I said, all of my stuff's down below. Follow, like, share. If there's anything that you like in the, the fan art, fan letters, anything like that, P.O. Box is listed down below. You guys know the drill. Let's go ahead and jump into today's subject. And that subject is going to be drumming in heathenry. Um, yeah, crazy, huh? Uh, this is something that I thought I'd bring up. It's not going to be your typical drumming video as far as uh, drumming and heathenry goes because I'm not your typical heathen drummer. Um, I'll explain a little bit about that. Um, well, hell, let's go ahead and do it now. Um, part of the reason why I, it's difficult for me to try and explain it is because in order to understand the difference as to why I am not your typical heathen drummer is because you need to understand regional and cultural differences as far as drums go. And uh, most of the drums that you will see depicted within heathenry are going to be frame drums uh, that are hide drums. And drummers will go, oh, okay, I understand that. Uh, versus somebody who's not like, what the heck is he talking about? A hide drum versus uh, a frame drum versus whatever. Okay, so just for some background, a frame drum is a solid ring, usually of wood. Uh, it can be of other materials, but most often it's wood. Modern ones tend to be laminated. Um, you will see some with a cross brace, some without. Frequently there's a hole carved in the side of the wood for a thumb grip. Not all of them are like this, some are without. There are as many different kinds of frame drums as there are ways to attach the hide skin to the frame drum. So when I say frame, it literally means that it's just this ring. Uh, that is the frame is the drum. It's just a frame upon which you apply this hide, the skin that is the head of the drum. Now, there is the reason that I specify this is because drums can be headed with different things. They can be headed with uh, skin, they can be headed with uh, fiber skin, which is what mine are, uh, they can be headed with mylar, they can be headed with all kinds of things. And I've played everything from uh, heads, like skins, uh, to I've played everything. Uh, I've had my hands on everything. Um, so most of the videos that you see are going to depict frame drums because they are more historically accurate for the area. You have that frame and then you have this skin that's over it. The skin depends heavily on what is native to the area and what is easily uh, caught, tanned, and added to you know, a drum without too much effort. And usually they are either uh, wetted, attached to the frame, and then dried so that it's like a permanent attachment. And then as it dries, it draws that head taut. Um, you'll see things like um, the Irish and Scottish uh, that use the bowren or the bodren 
for those that belt them. Uh, but it's a frame drum that is usually struck with this little stick that they'll boom, 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 and it's used largely with uh, bagpipe groups and things like that. It's a good uh, tempo keeper and it's got a wide range of sounds that are capable out of that particular drum due to the frame head and the stick. Now, I can break down all the different kind of sounds you can get out of a frame drum, but I don't have a frame drum at the moment. Uh, frame drums are usually played either by holding the frame in general and striking it with a striker uh, stick that will give it a very deep bass sound. You usually have a more limited sound range of the sounds that you can get out of it, but they make a good driving beat. Frame drums were popular uh, in Northern Europe largely because, one, they're easy to make, and that's just how people knew how to make them, uh, and two, it does make a deep reverberating bass, which when you're dealing with areas such as, you know, say Norway, Scotland, the Highlands, England, uh, good bass vibrates and carries quite a bit in those regions, especially with the way the hills roll and everything. I, and I, I can only imagine how glorious a bass of like a good frame drum sounding in a uh, in open area, such as like a fjord, uh, would be in the day. I mean, that would be beautiful, incredible. Just this boom, boom, boom. Now there are a couple of different variances on the sound you can get out of a frame drum, but um, largely the reason that you will mostly see those in these videos is because regionally it's appropriate, and secondly, um, in general neo-paganry and uh, just kind of in the neo-primitive approach to things, that's what everybody's drawn to, because uh, it's got that very primitive feel to it. Now there are other kinds of drums that were probably present in uh, in general heathen areas during arch heathen times, especially with as much as they love music and as much as there was intertrading and a cultural exchange with other regions. Actually what I'm about to play for you would not have been out of place in a, say, Viking camp, a late heathen period after a lot of cross-cultural uh, exposure uh, with uh, other cultures. And the reason for this is my background in drumming. I started out drumming mostly doing snare and bass back in a middle school concert band, a uh, little bit of marching. Uh, I do have a snare somewhere, but I did not break it out for this because that's not what I'm after here. Uh, this isn't just show off time. This is talking about, you know, pagan drumming stuff. So, uh, but after middle school, I took some time off from drumming. Um, but once you're a drummer, you're always a drummer. You tap forever, you never stop. Um, and then I ended up picking up drums again when my mom got into a local belly dance group and we got tied in with the local Renaissance Fair doing that. Uh, so for years after that, a couple of decades, uh, I played heavily uh, djembe, dumbek, asunga, uh, various drums, various drums, uh, frame drums of various kinds, riks, defs, uh, mostly Middle Eastern style music because we were playing mostly uh, belly dance music for belly dancers and we would play live and some of my viewers that have danced for me before can attest, uh, it was a lot of fun. That's what we did for ages. Uh, I was one of the lead drummers, so I would do a lot of high-end, fast work, lead stuff. Uh, the drum that I'm going to play for you today is one of them is one of the ones that I used to play for that. Uh, the other one is the one that I would play for drum circle, for jams and things like that afterwards because of the sound that she gives. So, uh, just kind of a breakdown on the types of drums that I play. I'll show you Val here in a minute, but this is Jewel. Uh, Jewel is what we call a dombek. All right, this is a Middle Eastern style drum, and she's got a fiber skin head, which means it's uh, kind of a fiberglass style overlay over a mylar base, and then hollow innards. You can do insert mics and things like this, uh, which we have done before for shows, but I'm not prepared for that because I usually play in the wild and the live, and so I don't have it rigged for sound capture. But anyway, uh, so this is the kind of drum that I typically play, one of them anyway. I'll show you the other here in a minute when we actually get into the deal. And the reason that I specify this isn't going to be your typical kind of heathen drumming thing is you don't typically see these in heathen videos right now, um, largely because it's more Middle Eastern and people fear that cross-cultural element of things. But when it comes to drumming, drumming is universal. It doesn't matter um, whether you're using more Middle Eastern drumming or if you're using more African drumming or if you're using more Northern European styles. There are some beats and tempos that tend to be predominant in certain cultures and you will identify them more heavily therewith. But 
when you are dealing with the metaphysical reasons for drumming, it's actually more about the vibration and less about the cultural element of where that particular beat came from. Because when you're dealing with it, it's like dealing with magic. Magic is a method of understanding the metaphysical elements of the world around us. Regardless of culture, it is about understanding the physical realm around us. And so there's a lot of regional crossover because it's not about the gods. It's, it, it's about uh, understanding the world around you and the energies and the metaphysics that go along with it. So when you're dealing with drumming, you're dealing with a lot of the same things. You want a cross-cultural element of drumming. You want to be able to sit down with djembes, gombeks, songas, frame drums, um, tab tablas, you know, you want to be able to sit down with all kinds of different drums and create this sound uh, because the depth and the unity of that sound is just amazing. When you get 30, 40 drummers all going at it with various drums, various sounds, you're throughout the sound spectrum. It is literally a wall of sound. Uh, it is an incredibly powerful and moving thing and I highly, highly recommend checking out uh, when you get an opportunity, like at a Ren Fair or anything like that, check out the drum circles. Some of them are better than others. Uh, you will end up with ones that are just a bunch of drunken guys slapping on a djembe, pretending they know what they're doing. Then you'll have others where you've got drummers that can anchor it because they know what they're doing and they've been at it for a while. And then you've got ones that are uh, that they are able to anchor it and allow for intermediate and beginner drummers to just kind of fit in. You know, they'll carry it while the others can find their place in it and be part of that that hole and so they'll carry it while the others fill and it's 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 cool it's neat i used to go up to drum shops all the time and just you know start playing and then we do an impromptu drum circle so i'd start playing in the shop and then we'd have a half dozen guys step up and start playing with me and they'd match beat and everything and then we'd have the newbies over there that are interested in it but not you know super comfortable and they'd pick it up and start you know maybe playing with the frog that does the Rennies know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. I've got other percussionary instruments in there, like I play the bones uh, for more. That's more for acapella singing group kind of stuff or Irish stuff. Um, I'll explain them at a different time if y'all are interested. This may be a dud. You guys may not care about this. You may get mad because I've talked for 15 minutes and haven't played the drums yet. So we're not going to do any more talking. Hell, it's episode 200. Screw it. Um, if you want more breakdown on the metaphysics and everything of why drumming school, so the sociological element, the society element of drawing people together and unifying, the pervasive element of creating active energy out of potential energy, you are adding energy, you're activating energy is what you're doing. You're taking potential energy and you're activating it and making it more usable on a metaphysical play space. Whether you're talking about, about to do magic, ritual, anything like that, it is a fantastic way to activate potential energies and to ready the air. It's wonderful for readying and a space for energy work, especially if you've got an area where it can reverberate and kind of gather in an amphitheater-like setting. Uh, it can create a, and it can help to facilitate the altered state of consciousness that is necessary for effective ritual or magic workings. So highly recommended in use of anything dealing with uh, magic work or ritual where you want to take some time to get that altered state of consciousness and you want to be able to get everybody else in that altered state of consciousness with you. Excellent modality to do that, uh, especially if you can have others gather in. Uh, you can also <clears throat> you can also use it with your drummers, those that are comfortable with drumming in front of others and can carry a, a beat in a bucket. Uh, they can do this while the others meditate, focus, uh, maybe tell stories. You can have it playing in the back. You have them playing in the background while someone's talking, while there's a storyteller presenting. There's so many different elements of why this is effective, what it works for, what it can bring to the table. There are health benefits to drumming. The vibrations help to break up all kinds of toxicities and buildups in the body. Uh, the repetitive striking motions plus the physical movement of the hands helps to offset all sorts of things like um, arthritis to a certain extent, um, other hand-related breakdown issues, uh, which I can tell I haven't drummed in a while. And mental health, it has magnificent effects for mental health uh, as far as resetting things and all that. I mean, you want me to go on about the benefits of drumming, I'll go on about the benefits of drumming for like three and a half days. I've drummed my entire life. 
uh, and I was in a drum group for at least a couple of decades. Uh, there's a lot of overlap between my Ren Faire time and my hardcore heathen time. Uh, the only reason I stepped away from it is because I just didn't have time for it anymore. Um, I was in my probably early 30s and decided, hey, I just don't have time to sit and uh, and chase the Ren Faire circuit anymore. So I didn't. So anyway. All right, we're going to let this go. We're going to drum now, okay, guys? I got to take the rings off because they'll mess the heads up. Simple as that, all right? So we're going to stop here. I'm going to click over. We're going to change our approach, and we're going to get to it because I have spent way too much time talking, and that's not what you're here for today. So hail to you all. See you in a second. All right, I'm like... <clears throat> this is taking so many takes because I am like kind of nervous. I used to do this professionally and so now I'm like, yeah, because it's been too long. Uh, this is my dome bag. This is my performance piece. This is one that I would use to do uh, all my belly dance shows and stuff. Okay, uh, One of them. Um, this is one that I picked up kind of later on. I've played ceramics. I've played this one's got a fiberglass body, resin body uh, with a fiber skin head. It's got a good deep bass. Nice crack up there in the text. Uh, it's got a good range in the slide. Uh, you can trombone it to give it some various sounds. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, this is not one that I would normally use for like a drum circle, but I could. I absolutely could, uh, especially if I was doing over the top kind of lead stuff. Um, staccato kind of uh, off the off the offbeat kind of things, or if I was trying to do filler things, if I was trying to do trills, because um, it's great for trills and accents. And then just normally what I would do is play bass, you know, bass, uh, bass Middle Eastern rhythm typically with it. And then of course I would go through and I'd jazz it up for what I did if I was doing filler. So it'd, that one um that was all over the place not fantastic but nonetheless you kind of get a feel for it you can do there's a lot of different kind of rhythms and stuff you can do with it and uh when i'm not as nervous because i'm not showing off i can do a lot more with it but anyway uh, this is one that I like to occasionally play during a jam, but it's not necessarily my favorite to jam with.
you kind of get the gist of it. You kind of get the feel of it. Let's go ahead and move on to Val. This is the one I think you're going to be more interested in anyway. So we're going to drop down the camera all the way. I'm going to kind of kick it to the side here and drop her a bit because Val is a little different. Okay. Now Val is what's called an Asunga. Uh, it's a combination drum. It's a mixture of a conga and I can't remember the other one. Uh, but it's got a fiber skin head, uh, which is a Remo specific. You can hear that deep, deep bass. Listen to that ghosty tenor. And then she's got... This drony sound to her. It's just amazing my neighbor starts working in the yard. Hopefully that won't interfere too much, but let's play a little bit.
that's that. Whew. I am sweaty. I am hot. Ooh, hey there. We're doing crazy things with the camera. Sorry about that. Forgive the shaky cam. I'm having to work with what I got. I'm pouring sweat here. But yes, fixing the tripod because I'm not doing any more cuts if I can help it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, just kind of, it's 100 degrees out here. <laughs> just kind of my jam session. And uh, it's been years since I've played. I miss it. And Twyla's gonna be crazy now because I'm gonna have the tap again. Um, drummer's tap is a thing. We never lose it. And now my hands are all like, gotta play, gotta play, gotta play. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, we can talk more about the metaphysics and the talky bits later. Episode 200, I figured I'd talk for a bit and then I just jam. You know, why not? Something fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I know, I know, I know. I lost it a couple of places in there. I got off beat, but it is a jam session. That, that stuff happens. You gotta be okay with that. You gotta be cool with that and just roll with it. It was not a performance piece. It was not picture perfect. Uh, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> you just roll with it and do what you do. So hope you guys enjoy. Uh, thank you all for watching. In the meantime, hail to you all. May your hearth fires burn bright. See you in episode 201. Okay, we're gonna give this one a try. I make no promises. Um, Pre-credit or post-credits wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Cutting room floor stuff. Hi. Yeah, we're kind of off kilter on the camera here. Um, yeah, this is crazy times, but this is episode 200. So, you know, I thought I'd try and mess with some stuff. Hopefully this went off well. Please guys let me know. Um, oh yeah, hmm, rings. Gotta take my rings off and my watch. Can't do drumming stuff with rings on. Although I guess I could do that top of the show, couldn't I? Yeah, I'll do it top of the show. Um, this is going to be in separate parts anyway, because I'm going to have to change camera angles and stuff for the uh, drumming part. So, and then I'm going to change audio because I'm doing the headphones here, which gives better, better talky audio. But I'm going to have to switch to phone audio in a little bit. Uh, because it is the only thing that picks up the bass on the drum adequately. The headphones pick up some of the drone tone, uh, but not nearly enough. I used my directional mic, and it picked up the tinny uppers, but it did not pick up the bass parts, or the uh, the drone, which is really what I was going for. Um, it's a specific kind of thing when it comes to an asonga and the, and the dumbex like I play. Um, I, I hit a certain drone tone. Uh, it's essential for my more, you know, uh, transcendental stuff. So, anyway. Um, yeah, fun and games. No new D&D stuff just yet. Uh, life has been stupid, still. But, we talked about before, um, I did get a provisional offer from that one position. Look at that. The wind is going to knock my tripod over. So, we're going to do a little pre-show tech stuff and we're gonna fix the tripod yeah isn't that great love it anyway um so yeah we're working on that um right now i'm sitting in limbo waiting for hr working with the state is like that sometimes um it's ridiculous july is going to be stupid for me if i can ever get started i'm going to be working two jobs through july um because they only get paid on the first of every month. And uh, home dudes living check to check right now, so you got to, uh, you know, keep working, you know how it is. So, you know, I'm gonna be working uh, the night job to pay the bills while I work the day job to establish the new pay the bills and eventually make the transition. Anyway, funny games. So I will have D&D &D updates coming up. Um, my session is coming up pretty soon. Uh, we're actually gonna do, I think, here late July we're gonna have a session and I will have some updates for you guys I'm really excited about it because if things go according to plan I have some reveals for the party that uh, I'm hoping that I can pull off we'll see depends on timing and it depends on my ADHD crew and what they decide to do can't rush them can't railroad them too much gotta let them do their thing and so there's a distinct possibility I may have some cool stuff there's a distinct possibility we may shop for three hours I don't know <laughs> you guys know how it is if you play it's a thing. Man, there's a loud bird. Hi, hi, birdie. How you doing? Yes, I know. 
All right, anyway, let's go ahead and jump into today's thing. Since it is episode 200, it's going to be kind of a going thing. So it's a probably a longer episode with some of the jam stuff. Um, I may add some extra stuff afterwards. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, we are going to be live in three, two, one. Let's jam. Bonus doom back. sound check. Sound check two. Ready? Sound check times three. Sound check times four, straight phone audio. 